For the longest time, my feeling is kind of you are in a room and this room has a window and the window it's pointing towards the outside world. And I'm just looking at this empty room and when I look out the window, I just see maybe a slight slice of the outside world and I feel incredibly isolating even though when I'm in the most crowded place, even when I'm surrounded by the most upbeat energies, I feel isolated. For me, a lot of times, the internalized shame, internalized transphobia has really gotten me to the point where I can't break out of that. Because when I look down and I see biological parts, and then I think this biological part means that these social and cultural norms that I have to fulfill, if not, I'm a failure, or if not, I shouldn't be a human, or if not, I don't know what I am. It doesn't mean that once you come out, once you start that, that initial exploration, it's just gonna be all smooth sailing afterwards because it is a long journey of trying to get to the bottom of this. The hardest thing is actually having to come out because you don't just come out once, you come out over and over again. You have to tell every person in your life. And there's so much anxiety around that because you just don't know how people are gonna react. Um, and it, it, it never really ends because every time that you go to a, a new hospital, a new doctor, uh, you go on holiday, you go to a hotel, you even just go into a shop, you have this little potential moment of confrontation. A lot of the feedback that we get from people is just that it is something that they didn't realise they were missing in their life. Um, and that perhaps they've come here for an art class or a dance class um, and what they've found is on top of that activity they came to do, they've found people to connect with, they've found a place to exist in, um, and that it's fulfilled a gap that perhaps they weren't aware. When I have those painful moments, or when I start to feel the pain, when I start to feel these internalized stuff, how do I address them? For a lot of times, it's just depression. I just want to completely isolate myself and close everything. And then hopefully, over time, it gets better. I try to put myself in a very affirmative environment, no matter if it's a nightclub that's very inclusive of gender and sexual minorities, a lesbian club, or where, you know, the place where the queer culture pops. social meetup with just other trans people. They also know how painful sometimes this journey is and how big of a challenge this is for their life, but they're still trying to do it because with that queer joy, it's just unmeasurable. Once you're accepting that queerness and then you just get more queer and more queer and you just get more powerful, more powerful in a queer way. So that's kind of that what expansion is like. I think the second time that I had intimate connection with someone or intimate um, you know, sex with someone, after I transitioned. And it was mind blowing because you realize how beautiful it is for the first time. And then you realize that sex can be defined in so many different ways. I desire to feel connected in that way. I desire to feel celebrated in that way. I desire to feel seen, loved, accepted embraced, celebrated, and I desire to do the same for the other person. Hello, my name is Xion, and I'm 24 years old. I, that's it. That's, a, that, that's everything about me.